and I cannot believe I stuck to my plan. Five new heaven and earth starts during the month of May. That was my stitch mania. And I did it and I made uh, not floss tube videos, uh, stitch mania videos of each project. I'm very proud of myself. Okay, so um, I had to just make a little pause there and now I can't remember what I was talking about, but uh, welcome to FlossTube 34. Yes. Um, first of all, before anything else, I want to say a big, big thank you to Amanda and another anonymous um, person who bought me some cups of coffee and thank you very much for the support and um, I'm very grateful and I have invested the cups of coffee right into the floss tube channel and I will talk a little bit about, more about that. I'm uh, trying out some new threads. I'm starting another huge project this summer. And I thought the support you gave would fit perfect for that. So thank you very much. I should have made this shout out in my first Stitch Mania uh, episode because it it has been way too long before uh, throwing out a thank you for the coffee support. Um, so that is something I learned. I will not wait. I will make the shout out the upcoming video, no matter what it is. So a huge thank you, really. I, it's very, very appreciated. And... To all of you who keeps coming back and watching my uh, stitch alongs, my stitch and sheds, um, my stitch with me's, my floss tubes, my manias, my unboxings, thank you. It's very appreciated and it is a lot because of you that I keep doing my videos. And to all of you who are new, hello and welcome. I'm Linda, and this is my channel, Linda's 144 Hobbies. I'm from Sweden, Europe, so the English might not always be the best. Um, yes, 144 Hobbies. Well, mostly and mainly. It is about cross-stitching, but just in case I fall back into my other hobbies, I got it covered, you know? <laughs> Anyway, so it's been Stitch Mania, and uh, I have been, my Stitch Mania was about starting five new Heaven and Earths, and I gave them six days each. So that's what I've been up to uh, since my last floss tube. And instead of making floss tubes during uh, May, I made five different Stitch Mania parts where I just highlight the, the whip that I the project that I was working on so if you want uh, more information about that or I have done like stitch and chats and just stitch with me and some picture clipping just uh, head over and uh, take a look at them um, so I will show you the whips um, what I've been working on it is in no special order I will just grab them here so <clears throat> one of the um, projects, it's my computer, which throws the extra light. It will turn off in a second because I'm uploading, <laughs> I'm uploading, I'm uploading my last mania video as I'm filming the floss tube. This is the correct way. So one of the starts, uh, was Eternal Promise by Matt Stewart. Oh my freaking god! I cannot believe 
that I actually finally got to start it. I was so scared of it. I thought it was going to be like confetti hell, but it wasn't. And it's on 28 count, which was also very scary, but it wasn't bad at all. Not, not yet, at least. There is a little bit of Kranich in there. Kranich. Petite treasure braid. Yeah, it's just a few stitches, so I guess it's difficult to see. Um, how much, how many stitches did I do? Oh, hey. Um, can it be around 4,000 stitches, maybe? Let's see. No, 5,382 stitches on this beautiful piece. And I remember I didn't want to stop. I wanted to continue, but there was something else coming up. And by the way, no, I will take that to, la to the last. So this was Eternal Promise. All the projects I'm showing are Heaven and Earths. Um, so I stitched it on 28 count, one over one full cross. What else? What do we have here? Oh, this must be Couch Dragon. Yes. So this is Couch, couch Dragon, which I've just uploaded um, the Mania, Stitch Mania episode. There is quite a lot of Krennic. I don't know why I say Krennic because I don't, I stitch with Petite Treasure Bread with the metallic threads and the light doesn't capture it too much, but there is some here and there's some up here. You can see it a little bit, but on this piece, I made 3,984 stitches. Um, it's on 25, 25 count. It's a full cross, one over one. And the colors are beautiful and it's so much smaller than, than I expected. What else did I stitch? I have three more here. We can do the other Spangler because I know I have a Spangler on this. And this is the right way. This is Treasure Quest, also by Randall Spangler. It is half stitches, two over one on 25 count. And I think you can't tell that it's half stitches. And I had, yeah, at some point I know I, I was thinking, what, what am I stitching? It's just a big blob of different of colors. You know, what, what's going on? There has to be some motive that I'm stitching. And there is actually a face up here of a pirate. You can tell, but so I made 7,339 stitches, but remember it's like half stitches. So you always make a, a bigger progress when you're 10 stitching. But Treasure Quest is one of my, one of the oldest um, Heaven and Earth designs I bought. So it's been waiting around for a long time. What's next? Then we have Watchmen. I cannot wait to get back to this. And of course, I forgot to say, um, Eternal Promise, Couch Dragon, and Treasure Quest, they're all regu regular sizes with the regular colors, all right? Now, Watchmen, Watchmen, 
are a super sized with max colors. And I was thinking that I might just do an extreme cross country stitch. I'm not sure, but I only stitched black on this. So this, I started from the bottom. So this is the bottom. I think it's like the three, I think it's the three bottom partial pages that I finished with black. <laughs> so cool. It's so cool. Wow. I cannot wait to get back to this one. And I'm not sure if I will just continue with the black all the way to, you know, to the other side of the bottom or if I should buy the next color and start filling that out. Oh, it looks so cool. And this is on 28 count. So I was a little bit too brave here. I'm doing 28 counts all of a sudden, which I told myself never to do. I like to have the, the designs like this, then I don't have to see my, my double chin. Anyway, <clears throat> I made quite a lot of progress on this one because just stitching with one color, you know, you don't have to, you just, you know, you don't have to search for the next color or whatever, just one color. So I did a lot, 8,186 stitches. It's full cross. It's so nice. And the coverage is just amazing. I love it. And the birds on Watchmen, I, th I hope I have put some pictures up here. And when you finish the black stitches, if I just go black, I mean, you're going to see the birds and everything already. It's going to look so freaking cool. But I think, did I say, was, was, was there 300,000? There was like hundreds of thousands of stitches with black. <laughs> I love the craziness. I just love it. I live for it, you know. Oh, I just, it makes me happy. It makes me so happy. It's like I could take all my cross stitches and put them in bed with me when I go to sleep. That's how much I love them. Okay. And we have only one left, right? So that's midnight munchies. Munchies, munchies, midnight munchies. And here I also decided to be brave. I got 18 count Ada. New to me, gridded, I like that. And this piece is the regular size, but it has expanded color. Uh, so there was like 125 colors, I think. It just gave it a little bit more depth. So this is my progress. Wow. Now having been away from it for some weeks, it looks really nice. I like that. But you know, Randall's colors and art is just, oh, it's so nice. I mean, it's not like, oh, it's beautiful. Not often. It's cute. It's colorful. It's colorful. It's happy. And you just want more and more. You just want more. You have Sunday mini. That's a mini Sunday delight. Many of his designs are perfect as minis. Not all of them, but many of them. So that's the progress. And there it's, I stitched with two threads over one on Ada. It's a full cross and I made 3,318 stitches on this baby. And what I really liked about Ada was the pin stitching. The pin starch starts and no, I think I started with loops, of course, but you can end really nicely with pin stitches on Ada. Um, I know way too on, 
um, at least 25 count even weave, which I can hide the pin stitches pretty well. But on Ada, that was really nice. But since I don't know how I'm going to explain this, but let's let's take an empty page of my calendar. So if we pretend that these lines are the threads in the fabric, right? So in even weave, you have threads going like these, like this, even, evenly. And in between each thread, there is a hole, right? So when you stitch one over one, you stitch like this. So there is a hole in each square here. And when I use my left hand from underneath the fabric, finding a hole to, you know, to push the needle through, I have quite a lot of holes on the even weave. Even if I uh, find a hole here, it's the wrong place, of course, because I wanted it to go up here. It still goes up. And then I, I search again and I find the hold. But, okay, on, on Ada, it's like you don't have that many holes. Because on Ada, it's like on 18 count, if you would convert that to even weave, then Ada would be on over two threads. So you have, if you would stitch on even weave with 18 count, that would be a 32 count. You have hole, 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 hole. You have holes all the way. So then you would stitch from that to there and from there to there for a full cross. And finding the holes, I would, you know, maybe pinch my needle up here in that hole and then retry and I would find the correct hole. But on Ada, you don't have these middle holes. You just have the four holes up here. I'm really trying to explain this. So when I'm trying to find that hole to push my needle up, maybe I push the needle here in the middle and there is no hole. So I get a stop, you know, the, the needle just breaks and I will retry and the needles go like this. And in the end, that starts hurting my joints in my fingers. Same thing from on, on top. It's, it's difficult to explain, but I noticed that maybe I found it a little bit more time consuming, a little more bit more difficult because I'm so used to stitching on even weave. So my, my muscle memory is for even weave, not Ada. It sounds a bit silly, I guess, but I got very much pain in my joints and I have problems with that, obviously. So I'm sorry for the long rant about that. So back to Stitch Mania. I made a total stitch of, I wrote it down, 28,209 stitches throughout the whole month. Holy F-U-C-K. Oh my God. That's a lot. And that is also something I learned through Stitch Mania. That is so, it's so nice that when you kind of start reflection, reflect on stuff and think about what have I learned through this. And one is that six days on one project seems pretty okay. When I'm, I've had four days of intense stitching, maybe I start feeling like mm, soon it's time for a new one. I would like to most of the time go to the next project. So I think a six day rotation would be pretty nice. 
And the other thing is that I think I make around 3000 stitches a week, give or take, uh, depending on what I'm up to, how I'm feeling, how much I'm working, yada, 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 whatever. Yeah. So I realized that 3000 stitches is for me, at least it's pretty much. And I was amazed of how much progress I can actually get. So I'm, I'm starting to, I love starting new projects and I will start more, but I'm starting to feel that I want to get progress on all my whips, some more than others, but um, I want to get past that first page of stitching on all of the stuffs, you know. So, and I think if I'm consistent, I, uh, that's also what I'm thinking. What if I just stitched on one project, oh, 28,000 stitches? Let's just say I would do half, that's like 14,000 stitches a month. That's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been a fun month, but now I'm really looking forward to what's coming up. And what is coming up? Are we on to plans? I think we are on to plans. So I have written down a little bit of what I need to talk about. Um, yeah, my plans. Okay. So I have a plan for you, June. I'm trying something new out. Um, now I don't remember her name. Thread, thread the needle. I think that's her name on floss tube. She said that she's going to have one piece that she focuses on the coming month. And that means that she needs to stitch 100 stitches on that project before she's allowed to stitch anything else. So I'm going to try this out. I still want more process progress on softest steel. I'm very close to 30% finish on that piece. And that's the one I have the most done on. And I would like more. I want to finish the top background uh stitching so i can go get to the to the flag i mean that's going to be amazing to stitch because that's the uh, metallics and stuff in there and there's a horse head and all so i'm thinking a hundred stitches of back of background is going to go pretty fast <clears throat> so i'm going to stitch 100 stitches on softest steel before I'm allowed to stitch on anything else. So that's one plan. The other one is I'm dying to get back to Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Oh my God, I've been wa watching Tracy's progress and I've been wa look, wa um, following uh, Kumari, which a lot of you guys out there has been uh, telling me about and uh, looking at it and I just, I stitched on it in April and I enjoyed it. And ag again, I found that I actually get progress done. It's not like I'm threading, you know, uh, threading water or whatever you call it. I, I just have to sit down and stitch on it for a week. And I know that I will have progress on it. So the first week of June, I'm planning on 100 stitches of so so uh, softest steel. And then uh, once upon a fairy tale, right? And then uh, the second week, um, I was planning on spinning the wheel. The wheel is coming back, Cat. Cat said she misses the wheel. I missed it a little bit too. I I thought about it some while ago, and she said, "Well, it's kind of fun, and it is kind of fun because, well." then I don't have to choose myself. So the wheel is coming back, but since next week, like the second week of June, I have two days, extra days off 
from work. So then I need to start to make a new start. I didn't want to start June with a new start because I've just made five, five new starts, but I need to get this started. And that is the shelf life by Gecko Rouge. Oh my God, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. And oh, if you haven't seen my unboxing of this kit, then please go back. Uh, it's just a week or so old. Go back and watch it and look when I, when I show the paper pattern, 220 pages. I can't wait to start this shelf. It's awesome. And I blame Nikki <laughs> for pulling me through that rabbit hole, but thank you anyway. <laughs> um, so that's that. And then, yeah, I need two weeks. That's going to be really strange because then I have two weeks of spinning the wheel. I want to give each project one week. So not, I'm not going to do five heaven and earths. I'm going to do one each week. And that will give me about six days of stitching, give or take. And on Fridays, I plan on stitching on Mirabilia or my Chatelaine because I want to get progress on them as well. I have so many new Mirabilias and Chatelaines that I want to stitch as well, but I don't want to serial start these. I want to finish a Mirabilia. It's also like Kat says, I want to earn a new start of Mirabilia um, or the Chatelaine, you know, the fancy stitching. Um, so, so that's the plan. And I don't want to rush finish any of it. I just want to get a steady progress. So I'm thinking every second Friday it's Mira and every second Friday it's Chatelaine. I think I will try it out for June. So those are the plans. Whipco. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love making plans, but I'm very good at not sticking to them. So that's why Stitch Mania really surprised me that I actually sticked to that. Oh, there I have another whip. A lot of you people has talked about taking stitches to work. So I was thinking, well, why can't I do that as well? Nobody pays me money for my break. So if I eat fast, I should be able to stitch one thread every lunch break or most of the lunch breaks anyway. And I did. As you know, I joined the the Hands Across the Sea Sampler Stitch Along. It's the um, Ann, Mor Ann Morrison. And that was in celebration for traditional stitches. Uh, 15 year celebration, I think it is. So I've been working on that at work. And now I think I, I don't want to put, take it out of the Q snap actually, but then you're not going to see anything of it. So, and now my computer lit lit up. I have it here. I just need to take it out of the Q snap so you can see it properly. So it's also a very slow process, but you know, or progress. I, but you know, a thread every day or so. Okay, there is a kid outside playing with this ball. I'm just saying. So going slow, but I'm I'm getting there. I'm a, I'm a little bit behind now because I just, this is stitched with the Silks Soy 103 and it's on 45 count linen and I'm stitching 
with one thread over two. And it's, I will not do that. I have one more sampler actually, which is on 30, 46 count, I think. But uh, it's not really what I like. So I've learned. And I don't like the light blue on this background. But it looks pretty nice. I like it. It's small and sweet. And uh, it will be a while since until I will stitch another sampler. I have plenty of. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Let's not uh, talk about that. Anyway, um, that was that whip. That was the plans. Summer is coming and I'm melting and I hate it. Yes, I'm one of those people who don't like summertime. Um, what else? Yeah. Okay, so before we get to haul, I did get a few questions. Uh, first of all, uh, somebody asked me uh, about my uh, stitching setup or area uh, and they wondered how it looks like and it, it is difficult to explain so I have taken two pictures here I will just add them here and uh, I don't have uh, anything special uh, but I do sit in a comfy chair an old one um, there's big holes in it um, and, uh, help God, the one who sits in it, but me, <laughs> it's my chair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it, I sit there, I have, uh, tried to have everything, uh, you know, stitch related for the project I'm working on at the moment around me. Uh, it's not nothing that I am, you know, I think it's the best way, but I don't know how else to do it and we only live in a three room apartment so I don't have that much space for it. Uh, and I use my Lowry stand or my Millennium, no, my Necessary stand from the Millennium frames. I don't remember the company name. Um, so yeah, this is how it looks. And yeah, I do stitch a lot. I do spend a lot of time in that chair. Um, I only have one child um, and she's a teenager. So it's not like I have to, you know, pamper her all the time. Um, depending on how much work she has at school, it depends on how much I can stitch in the evenings. Um, I don't like to cook. I don't cook every day. Um, I don't like cleaning. I don't uh, clean every day or every week or anything. I just, it sounds like I live in a dump hole. I don't. Um, it's not the thing that I spend a lot of time on. Okay. Um, and uh, I do have breaks. Uh, I have dogs. Uh, so me and my husband usually takes you know, the walks with them. So that's, you, you get a break and I do get up and get a cup of coffee a lot <laughs> and, uh, or some water or, you know, so I do get these natural breaks, but in the weekends, I do spend a lot of time in the chair. I, I rather just stay there. I don't want to go anywhere or anything. I, I want sit and stitch because Saturdays and Sundays are the days that I can actually sit and get a lot of progress. And in the end of the evening, my ass hurts or my back hurts. Yes. So sometimes, uh, especially if I'm off work more than those two days, I sometimes have to stop early because I do have a lot of pain in my back. So, yeah. Uh, so that was one uh, answer to the question, I hope. And um, what else? Uh, how to stitch on easy grid. I will try 
in my next stitch and shed um or yeah stitch and shed stitch along with once upon a fairy tale i'm planning on doing that um I might be able to show it more up close. So let's just take the smallest. Um, so you have a grid here, which is 10 by 10, right? And the lines there, yes, they're right on like where the holes are. So many people, a lot of stitchers get intimidated by this because they don't know how to stitch because there's, there's not 10 grids between these lines. There is a nine. So you have to count the line as one stitch. So depending on what you feel most comfortable with, you will have to find out how it will work best for you and be consistent. But what I do is, it's my, my camera won't focus that much. I don't, will it focus better now? No. It's gonna be so hard because my camera can't focus. But I start my first stitch just underneath the gray line and just beside that gray line. And I stitch all my 10 stitches that way. And this line is my number 10. And same thing with, I stitch all the 10 stitches down and the gray line down here is my number 10. And I do that with all the squares and I've always done it that way. Even on the 20 by 20, I have always done it like that. So for me, it's just natural. I don't have to think about it. And on the red ones, the red lines here covers two, two stitches. So between that red line and red, that red line, there's only 18 stitches. So you have to count two stitches on the red line to the side and, and bottom. And I always start just underneath that line and just beside that line and stitch there. So my two last stitches on 20 are on this red line. Same thing at the bottom. So I've always done that. I have never ever changed that. I don't think anyway, because of, I know that will just mess up my head. So try it out. It's not that difficult, but I do prefer as it is on Ada, the line the grid is just between two stitches, so it's easier, of course, I get that, but it's not like that on even we. That was one question. And then um, the last one is somebody wanted to know how I pull the threads on these cards. So um, usually on the material packs, the threads come like this with the numbers and everything. Uh, and sometimes these are, there's a loop here in the end. So they have just pulled a long, long, long thread and, you know, just, uh, yeah, put it on the card. So first of all, you will have to cut the loops. So you have open ends like this. Otherwise do not pull the thread off the card. It's just gonna mess everything up, believe me. So what I do is when I cut the loop, I just, I take my needle and I find one single thread from this, from, from this part. I pull one thread like uh, I just pull it. And the same thing if you braid them, just you know, you need first you need to cut the loops and you can just make a braid or a 
plate them, I think it's called in British. And you do the same. I have the braided one here. And you just find one strand. Can you see it at all? And you just pull. And when it's braided, they sit a little bit uh, more tight. So don't braid them too tight. But if you don't, if you're afraid that the ends will tangle up, then braiding is uh, a good way. Uh, that's how I do on many of my uh, projects because I'm parking so often. There is a lot of threads hanging, and I I just braid them. And it's easy to just pull one thread from there. So I didn't show very well. I will show much more close up in my stitch, stitch with me videos. Okay. Um, so that's that. I don't think there was another question. No. I don't think so. I need a sip of coffee. So, a few shout outs. Have you all seen Darcy? Everyone talks about Darcy. He's a crazy Canadian man who stitch who stitches. And sometimes I find him a little bit too much, too energetic, but he's different, he's fun, he's entertaining. And go check him out. He's a lot of fun. Um and Leah Gur, she's a Russian girl, I think. She's from over on that side. And she's also quite funny, you know, very creative in how she shoots and cuts everything, edits everything. And uh, she, in her last floss tube, she was talking about being efficient and f how you can stitch faster. So. That was all ears and she showed a cheaper way of um, how to organize your threads. So for example, you can buy these Paco organizers where you have a threaded needle and you just park your needle with a thread in that organizer. And I've seen people trying you know, making their own uh, kind of parking organizers because the Pacos do cost a lot. I have the organizers and I've tried them. But when I put a needle with threads in that and you have like maybe 10 at the same well, if, if the whole organizer is full with needles and threads, I find that when I pull a needle from the organizer, the thread on that needle pulls the thread off from another needle. And I don't like that because when that thread is pulled off that needle, I don't know where it goes. Right. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to like Leah Gers method, but I'm going to try it. And that is. She took like boxes of chocolate. So first of all, I was thinking, what am I going to go and get boxes of chocolate to make organizers? Hell yes, I, I'm on. But I found another box. <laughs> so and she said to take, you know, these cleaning scrubs. Um, you know, they look like this, you have them in the kitchen and stuff, you know, and to just use double sided tape and glue it to the, to, to the board or the chocolate box, for example. And this is a lid on a paper box I bought on Ikea. And I don't know if I like the double sided tape. I tried, I did that. I would think, I think I would just use glue and glue them on. And then I copied out the, the key for once upon a fairy tale. 
um, and put it with double-sided tape on top of the those greeny things there and then I started trying so I have part two needles with threads on their symbol what is not good is that I don't have the numbers written down so I need to start writing them down because I usually look I don't look for symbols I look for the numbers so in Leah's video when she shows her it looks like a big mess and Darcy's kind of making a little bit fun of uh, about it and and I totally agree with him but if you can make a, a, a needle parker parking organizer like this it didn't cost me a lot of money four bucks maybe um, I'm gonna try because the pagos in Sweden cost maybe $25 or something for one so it's different the prices yeah so I'm gonna try that out hopefully it will work because this will make stitching once upon a fairy tale a lot more faster uh, so that's that um, so let's just go to haul I got myself the largest uh, scroll frames from uh, Om Ominac Omnic Omnic Oh God, I'm so ashamed. And a smaller size. I think it's the 80 centimeter. And I would love to have a scroll frame for, for each of my Heaven and Earth projects. No, for, for each of my full coverage pro projects, except for the super sized ones because they won't fit because I'm stitching on 25 count. Um, that would be nice. That would be really nice. Uh, so I got that and then also from here it says Omanic Omanic. I got two more side um, Not stretchers. I think this is the scroll Bars and these are called rods. So I got the, a smaller size So I have double up and these are the ones that are expensive. I think the bars is not so so bad um, and what else did I get? Yes, for the buy me a coffee. I learned about the CXC threads from China, which are a huge different in cost compared to DMC. However, when I got the threads, I noticed that they, they are different from each other. So I'm very skeptic, but I'm going to try it. Um, I've kitted up uh, my Game of Thrones pattern. Um, I will add a picture here on it. And if I would kit this up with DMC, it would cost me about $240 if I got the DMCs here in Sweden. Two hundred and forty dollars, and that's not even a lot. That was around two hundred skeins. Two hundred skeins. I don't get that. Two hundred four. Yeah, I think it's about that. So I made an order from object book on Etsy. She's in the UK. I need to stop buying things from the UK because the tax from there is horrible as well. But that cost me $60 for the same thing. So it's it's a huge difference. I understand the politi political stuff behind DMC and CXC. So I, I understand that, but I need to try it. So 
And that's what I used to buy me a coffee. I got the Animal Kingdom Super Size Max Color pattern from Heaven and Earth. I've been eyeing it for years and years. And I, as I told you in my stitching shed, I do get like, not, not fed up. That sounds really bad. Um, um, you know, you, you see the same start. As I said, top left corner, the gorilla, the elephants, and the birds. And, and you're like, yeah, okay, I've seen it a thousand times now. Do I really want to stitch that? Yeah, I don't know. But often you don't see the rest because a lot of us don't continue. But I made up my mind. I'm going to do it. And cat, cat talks. It's going to start this thing with me. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so good. So anyway, I got a full set of CXC. So this is full of goodies. And I will take threads for the animal kingdom from here. So it's not going to be completed, uh, fully kitted up. But I will have, you know, um, all the colors and through Facebook threads by spud. I think it's called her. Um, I, she's also in the UK. I ordered, I think it was 35 of the colors for animal kingdom. She didn't have, I thought she had all the th colors she didn't. So, but I know that black is included there. So, uh, hopefully they will come. I had some customs troubles, but they might, they might pull through. <clears throat> and for the CXC and the Animal Kingdom, especially the Animal Kingdom, I got two of these boxes. They're the double-sided, I'm sorry, air uh, plugs out. So it's the double-sided. What if I open the wrong way and all the threads would just fall out? They say that a box like this will fit a whole set of DMC. I don't think so. Not this one. It's the prim. You have to prove me otherwise. And... I was very disappointed because they actually don't fit properly in there. I have to put them a little on the side, which I don't like. I was expecting differently, but now I bought them, so I have to use them. So I'm working on that, on bobbinating all the CXC threads. There's like 447 colors. I love to bobbinate. So I got two of those. What else? I got the foam frame. And then I got lots of paper bobbins for the bobbinating. And I wasn't supposed to. I wasn't supposed to get Ophelia, the Mirabilia. Uh, it is the latest one, I think. Yeah, I think it's the latest one. Um, when I saw her a few months ago, I, re I really liked it. She was very beautiful. I like that it's almost a full coverage. But it was around the same time I was switching jobs and I was like, well, and Brexit and all, I know it's going to cost a lot of money. So I decided not to jump in. But I wrote to one of the Swedish stores asking, are you getting these as well? And they said yes. And then all of a sudden I got an email saying, we have it now. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's get it. And I had it the next day. So I ordered uh, the pattern and she's, she is so pretty. Very pretty. 
She's not going to be the ones I'm going to stitch very soon, but it's very pretty. And I also got the embellishment pack. And I heard that there were some troubles with with these colors, uh, with these be beads. There is supposed to be two packages of them. And I understand that Wil Wil Wilchelt, Wilchelt has forgotten to put in one box on some of the kits but this one was complete so i got the embellishment pack and then i got one of the carrion water lilies uh, they're supposed to be two different in ophelia but uh, one of them uh, i think they have problems now because of the whole world situation so i will get the other color at some other points and uh, as long as I have the pattern, the specialty threads, and the beads, I'm not worried about the DMC. I can always get that later. So that's one thing I got. And yes, um, one thing I ordered three, four months ago. Oh, it's another Chatelaine. I'm not going to open it because I'm going to do an unboxing of this. And it is the Alpine Season Cottage. Alpine Seasons Garden. But I ordered the, um, the Outlander edition. It doesn't say, so I'm a little bit worried that it isn't the Outlander edition. But I really hope so. Because I missed out on all the Outlander patterns on heaven and earth i hate myself for it seriously i just want to stitch jamie i really really want to stitch jamie but no no and obviously we're not going to be able to ever stitch any of the outlanders you know us who just missed out and i really hate myself for it seriously truly i hate myself for it so now i'm trying to find other cross stitching stuffs that represent it and this is a good one the Outlander edition. This one is for from the European cross uh, stitching company in the States. A very expensive. It doesn't have the DMCs. I suggest you go get the kits from Hawkins Hobbies because they include the DMC and they are still cheaper. And before you didn't have to pay taxes from, not taxes, yeah, taxes from England. You do now, so it's the same thing, you know. That was that. Now, let's bring out the beast. <laughs> oh, it's so heavy. Oh, shit. I have to kiss it. <laughs> okay, I'm silly. I know I'm silly, but you all know that deep down deep down you're just as silly as me i swear to god you are yes we all get like children like obsessed crazy people when we get things like this i know nikki she said she's stitching another shelf but she said it's like a quarter of this but i think actually she said it's just a quarter of this, but yeah, her picture is, but I think they're still quite big, aren't they? I think so. And in here, in here, it is the fabric. So it's 25, easy grid, very nice. But do you see this? That's the pattern. I cannot wait to start this. And this is just the fabric and the pattern. And you might think, well, what about the threads? Where are all the threads? You want me to show you? I will show you. It's going to crinkle. So if you don't like crinkle, pull, pull them out or just turn down the sound because it's going to crinkle. All right, get ready.
That's one. That's two. I'm not done. And that's three. And four. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, three kilos. I don't know what that is in pounds. Around six pounds? I think so. Six pounds. Three kilos of cross stitching. Two packages. I had such a great time opening it. I didn't have that much fun with the, de the, the delivery with FedEx. I had a little bit of problem there, but it's solved. It was salt, of course, because I got the package. Well, and then a couple of days after, no, a week after I received it, I received the bill for the tax and the customs. That was not so very fun. No, I was counting on it, but I mean, I find it so unfair, you know, because I'm thinking that in England, they need to pay extra taxes when they ordered the, the DMC threads and fabrics and whatever from the other countries, right? Now they're all closed, right? So they need to pay taxes when they make the orders to their company. And of course, I understand that it's a huge... Um, increase uh, for them as well so i guess they will add that cost to the kits for example gecko rouge or whoever you buy from so that means that maybe our kits will increase with a 20 percent cost the problem is that when we we say okay fine i still want the kit yeah there's no limit like yeah and then you buy the kit and because I bought the kit from England, I need to pay 20% of tax. So all of a sudden the whole thing has increased 40%, you understand? And I will seriously cool down on the buying. There's just a few <laughs> more things that I need. Um, I, there, there is one more Gecko Rouge, which I just have to have. I'm just waiting for that six month of gold member membership that I can spend the, the voucher, uh, on the gamer. Of course I need the gamer. And, uh, then we have the Mirabilias. Um, I was saying no to Ophelia and I felt like mm, no. And, uh, I don't know why. But I went to Hawkins and I was like, I wonder if there has been a new release. And then I saw it was the Bella Filipina. I was like, eh, eh, I haven't jumped in that boat yet. Um, but then I scrolled. I shouldn't have done that. But then I saw that Nora Corbett, uh, I know it's the same as Mirabilia, but we have the Nora Corbett designs as well. And I don't think I have ever bought anything from Nora design line. And there is three Zodiac girls who, they are so freaking cool. They are so, they, they are different. They are elegant and beautiful. And I was like, F you see, no, <laughs> you have to say no. And I was like, I was thinking of it for at least two days, maybe three, maybe less. I don't know. But I was like. I need them. And I was thinking, well, get one. And I was like, well, it's a Gemini. 
my daughter is a Gemini. But they were like cute. And then we had the Taurus, 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 who had horns and everything. I'm like, I, I need to have that one. She's like an elegant lady with horns. So I just got them all. And now I'm committed to get all 12. So I'm wondering, will they release three every month or every second month? Or will they release three every year? I don't know. But I have to get them from Hawkins. So that's that. And I'm really trying. So it, I'm starting to thinking if I need to do haul, I need. I, that would be like, I will try to get it from Italy and the European countries, Lithuania, you know, where I don't need to pay the extra taxes. And not more cross-stitching because, as I said, I want to get more progress. I... I want like scroll frames, project bags, um, like organizing needles, needle, not needle mindles. I have too many of them as well, but you know, just things like that. I want so many things. Yes. I think you catch my drift. Now get, let's get back to the amazing animal kingdom by Amy Stewart. I'm planning on starting this uh, thing on the 1st of August. Um, and as I said, Kat is considering on joining me. I think she will. She's going to join. Yeah, she's going to join. And she's going to make a start where the cheetah is in Africa, the African, like I think it's around in the middle. She had chosen a perfect start. And I don't want to start in the top left corner because I said, I've seen it too many times. So I'm thinking of starting in the bottom right corner where the winter animals are. And I told Kat, we need a hashtag for this because Oh my God, I've been rambling for over an hour. Well, because if any one of you out there wants to start the amazing animal kingdom as well, then it would be awesome if you use the hashtag for Instagram and we can follow each other there and see each other uh, progress, progress pictures. So the hashtag is Listen carefully. Hashtag ambitious, amazing animal adventure. Ambitious, amazing animal. Is it animal or animals? I will write the hashtag down. It's going to be so much fun. It's such a beautiful piece with all the beautiful animals. And if you want to check out the mini version I say go over to Tracy Craft House. She's stitching it uh, extreme con cross country, I think. Uh, the mini. And she's flying through that thing. And it's starting to look really amazing. And I'm so curious how it will look finished because I want to go big with all the colors for all the details. But it seems like she's getting quite a lot of, a lot of detail on the amazing mini version as well. Um, so yeah, please don't hesitate. You know, you don't have to kit up the whole thing. You can do like a uh, cat, uh, is doing. She's kidding up like for one page. And then as she says, when she has finished the page, she has earned to kit up, I guess the next page. She talks about it in her latest video. Um, the part three stitch mania of hers. So go over there and um, listen to what she has to say and all her amazing stars. She has, she's doing 23 stars Stitch Mania. Ooh. And a lot of them are just so lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You should go and check her out. And she's British. 
who lives in Sweden. So I need to ask her about how did she end up here? <laughs> but she talks amazing English, of course. Um, so that's that. And uh, <laughs> I know I need to say something more. Um, yeah. I think this will be all. I'm not going to wait a whole month until my next floss tube. Two weeks the most. Oh, yes. Ha, huh, I'll hold on to that. Next weekend is my daughter's 14th birthday. And no, um, we're not having like birthday party or anything. Uh, we're not a very big family. We're just a few, around 10 people. Uh, but we're not allowed to be 10 people, not yet, in the buildings or together, like. So we have asked people to come to the, to the yard where we live. And we have bought, we're buying a big cake. And we will, you know, be outside so we can have the distance. And everyone who wants to wear the mask and such can do that. We'll have the hand sanitizers and everything. Um, so yes, and I'm fully vaccinated now. So nice. Uh, I chose the, the vaccine, which people under 65 years weren't supposed to have. They didn't recommend it because we have had a few deaths, but I was thinking since I survived the first time, I will survive the next time too. So I got that. It's over and done. It's so nice. But I just want to throw something out there. Even if you're fully vaccinated, please, still, you need to be careful and respect your neighbor or like the other person. Because even if you're vaccinated, it doesn't mean that you're 100% protect it. It doesn't mean that you can't give it to someone else who might not be vaccinated or yes. So I'm just saying, even if you're fully vaccinated, be careful because um, it doesn't mean that you're safe. I'm just saying that. All right. Um, and um, yeah, so if you feel like supporting me and my channel, uh, there is a link to buy me a coffee if you would like to, to buy me a cup of coffee. I love coffees and I love cross-stitching. And um, yeah, <laughs> I need to make another shout out to Lee Lee Stitch, an Australian mom. She has made her fourth floss to video and her assistant is her little daughter and is just and she has so many whips and so many of them are heaven and earth's shuttling and her daughter is like smash that like button so you know that you're on our side <laughs> she's so cute and you know this couple is just a adorable and her stitching taste is just mm, just up my alley go check them out i will leave a link to them as well uh go uh subscribe to her channel so and if you like my channel and my kind of stitching then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, thank you for coming back hello and welcome to everyone who's new Thank you for all the support and love that you give. It's highly appreciated. So until next time, let's stop talking. Let's get back to stitching. Have a nice one. Take care.